Hello, I'm Job Jude, and welcome to MIE Music, where music is everything. I've been in the music business for over 50 years and toured from 1974 through 1999. Then I opened my own personal studio. I have built what they refer to as part casters all my music career, and due to the COVID closures, gave me time to address a couple things on my bucket list. I wanted to learn how to do nitro paint jobs on unfinished bodies and build vintage spec pickups. And being an owner and fan of Abigail Ybarra and Josefina Campos handwound pickups and investigate why their tones are so special. It became time to do research and development of Leo Fender's vintage single coil pickups. After six months of beta testing and encouragement from some of my favorite guitar players, it was time to market them. You can find my hand scattered wound pickups and reviews on Reverb.com and eBay. Now that I have introduced myself, I want to show you my old school step-by-step -step process featuring USA Remington wire and top rated USA suppliers. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. For more info, visit my website at www.miemusic.com. Dot com. Peace. This is just a little board I cut out and uh, put the different sizes of magnets in it. And that way when I'm building my flat wire I can keep them straight in a row and not get anything mixed up. And it works really good to do this. Alrighty, getting ready to uh, put my 54s on the market, and uh, they are the holy grail. It's my favorite pickup. If you love the old vintage Fender pickups, it's it's uh, it's unbelievable. I had a 54 in 1972, and I never forgot that tone. And I'm going to be very happy to put this product on the market. It's going to be available in reverb uh, in January 1st of February, 2024. And I also have uh, 1963s, which is uh, the hottest year output-wise that uh, the pre-CBS pickups were. Um, they went up as high as like 6.4, 637, somewhere in there. I'm going to put mine a little below that because it, it, it takes just a little bit too much of to the top in out. But I'll be in the uh, low sixes. And uh, they've been tested and, and they really sound good. So, two new ones coming to the market. And I hope you enjoy it. Put your magnet, hold it over your arbor press. This is just a little hand one. This is just cheap. Keep, keep the thing. Make sure your holes are lined up. Look the angle over. Squeeze her in. Come over to the other side. That's what I like about this table. The magnets stick to the top. Make sure you're in the spot. Hold it real good. Make sure it pops right in. So you got your two corners started. It's the most important thing. Um, I buy these jigs from, I've shared the link and I'll put it back up there again. And I like mine a little wider. A little deeper inside diameter. Deep guitar goods. I'll put your link out. They got all kinds of jigs. And fast delivery. Very fast delivery. So you got your two corners on. Now, back in when these were first designed, your G-string was wrapped. Well, today's G-string isn't. Um, so you got you can do some adjustments on how you want to do that vintage uh, stagger to it. And it's, uh, you can do a, 630 was the original height, you can go 650, go a little higher if you'd like. Um, so it, it depends on how you play. Some guys say they can feel the difference and all that stuff, and it's never bothered me. So I mean, a lot of good guitar players I know say it's never bothered them. So some guys swear it does, and if it does, then it does. Who, who's to say? So it's all about your hands, man. If those hands don't feel good around that neck and playing it, and how, how it's responding after finishing up, putting your bobbin together.
Regio Blank 1954. This is a Fender Spec too. This is on the money. And uh, people may disagree with this or whatever. I have a lot of old Fenders that I've rewound that were broke or just went dead. And then took the same winding pattern, same thing I do, and do it with the newer magnets. And the newer ones sound better. So we always think of the vintage stuff is going to be better. That's not always the case. And um, I think it's because everything's computerized today so they can put the proper ingredients 100% on the magnets. And back in the old days, they varied from guitar to guitar, pickup to pickup. You can get some that sounds absolutely wonderful. And the next one is like, oh, this one ain't happening. And Depends on the winder and the famous winders from back in the days. And the famous ones made some good ones. And there's a reason for it. I had a, a good December 2023. And I normally have enough bobbins made up for the last week till springtime. And I ended up running short, so I gotta do it in the house. So you wanna make sure this is well ventilated. Just don't use nothing but man wax, clear brush lacquer. And this is what I dip my bobbins in. So make sure you stir it up good. And you only need 15 seconds or so to do these things. We'll have to soak long. 15, 30 seconds. I put tape around the eyelets because you can wind your pickup, get it all done, and end up having a dead pickup because uh, you're not getting good contact with the eyelets. And no easy way to clean them out. You can put a soldering tip straight in it. That helps. That'll clean them a little bit. Then a real small pointy file. It's best just take time, tape them off, and you don't have to worry about it. So let them soak. Get rid of any excess, put it off your top. And this puts a protection around that magnet would die. The coil would rub up against the magnets until they got a bare spot. And then they'd use their power to sound real thin. And um, that was the end of the pickup. So. Anyways, I'm going to turn the fan on. The fumes are getting bad, and that's how you do it. Any other questions, let me know. I'm uh, working on a uh, 1982 AVRI American Vintage reissue. Um, so, this has been dipped in lacquer. And so, I take my tape off to cover up my eyelids. So I'm going to sand these a little bit. Any lacquer, both sides, and smooth out any lacquer spots. The tiniest of spots can break your wire. So you want to make sure you're nice and smooth all the way around, top and bottom.
use Remington wire. Have great luck with it. So I bring this out to the edge. I look at the end of my machine. I take my sandpaper and you need to take the coating off. Two or three good spins on it and fill and make sure all the coating's off. The problem is if you don't take that coating off, you can get done with a complete wound pickup and it'll be dead. So this is going to be a neck. And I know not to go past the end of my machine. That's my cutoff point. This first one I'm going to tie. Now it doesn't matter where I'm at. I'm going to put four or five wraps on mine. These I don't tie, I just put them straight through. Last one, I tie again. Then I take the end of it. You just push it through and I'll trim it off. Some guys solder, I don't solder yet. That's from the lacquer. Okay, put it on the winder. Winder up.
Now you, you're going to take your coil and put it straight down on the ground. I have a little wedge here and I like to take a little piece of felt. I keep a loop in there so that my wire will go in there. measurement and you want your guide to be 20 to 30 percent less than this size It'll take you a straight edge come straight across and about an eighth of an inch will put you on the money do a few hand winds give it a look to your outside. And make sure it's lined up good. Now there's two basic ways to wind these. Um, a lot of guys, 99.9% will be right up on the guide and they do it right here on this guide and, or just a little bit off I like to do mine back at a distance and I'll tell you why from watching uh, Abigail and, and Josephina or Josefina depending on how you want to pronounce it um, they stay at a distance they're back like this and so that's how I do mine so you can do me the way you want try them both um, the amazing thing about both those girls is that they just have a, a rod coming across there. And they don't even have a guide. I don't know how they do it. I mean, that's some skills, folks. That is some skills. Because these guides get off at all um, and are not set properly. I don't wind a good pickup. I'm starting over. I'm cutting wire. Um, so it's amazing what the, how they do that. So anyways... Yeah, you'll notice that these guys are right up on right up on the guides and they can do their fancy winding, however their pattern is or however fast they want to go. Um, I like to get back here. And I watch how I want to do my stuff. So it depends on how you want to do it. And this rod you can clean off with your uh, sandpaper once in a while. But anyway, I just want to point out the two different ways I've noticed people uh, winding on these.
reverse round, reverse polarity are much harder to make. It's a totally different tension. You wouldn't think it'd be a big deal, but it is. And probably why they cost more. I'm trying to consume them. Put a nice little bulge in the middle. That's my little hint I will give you. And that was passed on to me. And after making enough of them, it works. Nice little round bulge in the middle. And how you start your pickup is critical. I wish I could share that with you. But you could buy some $500 pickups and take them apart and see. All the fancy patterns that everybody talk about you gotta do. There's some patterns to it, but the fancier you get, it, it doesn't achieve any tone goals at the end. Find what works for you and stick with it. Just take good notes, videotape yourself, slow it down, look at what you did. Check the inside top, inside bottom, make sure there's no scraggler wires. If you are, you can get them squeezed in. Then, uh, come back over and tighten them up. Like, and do this slow with a little pressure so you don't break it. This wire will break very, very easy. The plain enamel breaks real easy compared to the form, form bar. so I don't know what gets it so excited about that way, but it works.
look here. and snow here at the end, the last couple hundred rounds. The machine is done. Absolutely beautiful pickup. This wire is very hard to see. You want to keep this up here nice and tight. I'll put you like a, a tie on the first one. Put you. I, I do five to six wraps. Fender only does two to three. And I also put flux on the end of, uh, of this. to you just unwrap a couple wraps and go back and do it this is to uh, soldering your lead wires before you go to waxing tap on that I'm going to fill the holes in a little bubble to the top Is always your black. So it's to the left here. Take these, you can push them back a little bit with your fingers. and find your hole. Tap on this side a little bit. Wire goes right through. Let her sit. Hold on to her for a minute. Make sure you don't get burnt.
too much stuff hanging out. Cut it off. A little bit more or anything. I don't know about that. Now I also like to take flux. And just put a little bit over the, the wraps. And I do five to six wraps for Fender on does a couple, two to three at the most. This just gives you a little bit of extra protection. You can put a little, little, little solder on there if you like and you can add the solder to it. Test. I'm not going to do the whole test here, but just enough to make sure we're because your lead wires sometimes you might have to re hit them, heat them up to get them to the happy spot, you know, where they work. Test at 1K first. 5.69. So we know pickups working, everything's good, and it's ready to go to wax. And I kind of do it in a two piece, a little bit around the top, and then the bigger piece around the bottom. And that's because of the size of the Bob and I make everybody's different on there what they want to do and I have the size I like everybody will find what works out best for them when they're winding um, had some vintage pickups that I took apart that were like 365 380 and just stuffed when you took the cover off it made you wonder how they even got them on there without breaking the wire so I guess it depended on the winder back then what they liked just wipe off the excess Put them on your tray, let them completely cool off and dry. When I first built my bobbins, and like I said, I, I lack them, and uh, Fender finally started doing it 20, 30 years ago, finally, because they started finding out what where their pickup failure was. But it was from the coil wire rubbing against the magnets. Until it got a bare spot and they shorted it out. And it's all about getting great tone. And I think every guitar player deserves it. Especially that top 20% that's real picky. That's the guys I want. I want them picky guys. I wish the other 80% would learn that. The too many are just happy. They plug their amp in, plug it into their amp, and they're happy. Sounds like a strat. That's good enough. It was funny, uh, 
a lot of the 50s and 60s had no wax or lacquer. And I noticed in the sets that had the lacquer, those pickups were harsh. So if, the, if they had been sprayed or dipped with lacquer, the whole, I'm talking about the whole coil, not the bobbin, when it's pre-made, I'm talking about after it's finished and they lacquer them and stuff. Those were very harsh pickups. They just didn't sound good to me. Of them were not treated back in the day. And I did not know that until I started building pickups and repairing them. And so they were, even the ones you found wax were still pretty modifying for some reason. put with the lefties and this will be my last batch to do today and I'll tape them tomorrow my wifey helps me with that and then I'll give them the final test CBS, which I love, and they're a lot like the Fender 5762s, except you have a reverse wound, reverse polarity metal, and of course they're hand wound, and that makes a big difference. Hand scatter, however you want to call it. This is the taping of the pickups once they're done. And this uh, is to help with uh, high gain feedback. And if you want to change your covers, you won't uh, mess up your coils. Uh, the tape is approximately six inches. It's not real sticky back tape. So it's easy to take off. And these 
pick up their stuff. They're about max the bobbin can take. These are 63s. So this was the hottest pickup fender made in 1963. Out of all the pre-CBS, about 6.1 to 6.3. Okay. My wifey's helping. It's hard to do this by yourself. This will give you a added life to your pickups and, and uh, protect them. And, be great for live or in the studio. This is the Fender guitar specs, how many winds and turns was put on the coil from 1954 through 1967. And it tells you there in 64, uh, you may have some made with form bar, you may have some made with enamel. This was the transition in the, when CBS was buying Fender number of turns, what kind of wire, uh, how the magnets were charged. Everything was north up until uh, through 59. Some 59s will be south, but and uh, they also changed the neck on the guitar that year from uh, maple to rosewood. So you could have either either one in that year. Leo didn't throw nothing away. So this is very good information when you're trying to buy the wire. This is a coil estimator. You can go in and pick what kind. This is set up on the precision base right now. I've been making a few of those. Um, put in your strat. What kind of resistance you're looking for. 558. Five, Check the length of your bobbin and everything. Make sure you can change those to what you want. And just hit calculate, and that'll tell you how many wines you need to start with. It's pretty accurate. <laughs>
Special thanks to Craig Sharp for demoing my uh, pickups for you. I asked him, I said, uh, due to uh, the copyright rules of uh, YouTube, and I'm new to it, so I don't know what I can do and not do yet at this point. I said, can you just doodle and jam a little bit uh, so people can uh, hear what the pickups sound like? And we just recorded it with an iPhone, and I just kept it real simple. But he done a great job, and I can't thank him enough. Greg and I played in a band together. It's now been over 30 years ago. When he joined me, he was just a young puppy and just loaded with talent. And just, just raw. He had it all. So one of the first gigs I took him to was CBGB's in New York. And we had another youngster playing drums and uh, they're looking around going, man, this is very cool, but this place is a dump. And Doc and I were looking at each other like, yeah, but this should be the start of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Everybody cut their teeth there. So many great bands started out of there. So it was always an honor to be in that room. I wanted to make a clarification. Since I'm videoing myself, um, it's a little hard to do these things, but um, when I get finished with my wines, I will put that first tie and then I take the bobbin off and I use a magnifying glass to uh, get the rest of the loops through. It's really hard to see, so if that part seemed pretty weird to you, it was weird because that's not really how I do it, but uh, due to video and, and stuff, that's how I come out. But anyways, I want to thank you all for watching. Um, the next part I'm going to do is going to... Uh, do some reviews from some of my customers. I've not had one person say, hey, I'd like to return them, uh, I don't like them, blah, blah, blah. It's been nothing but praise and love. And the people that have bought the Formvar version have turned around and bought the plain enamel. And then every one of those have said, I don't know which one I like best. The funny thing about the plain enamel wires, there's a lot of people going around on the internet now saying that you can take today's poly wire, which Fender currently uses, and they, they sound it sounds no different than the vintage plain enamel. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm going to get into that. And if that's the case, I will also be able to build a vintage sound and poly pickup at a much lower cost. Um, so, but it's got to sound the same to me or it's, it's, it's never living, leaving my shop. There's no way. But thank you very much for hanging in. And, uh, and so now the next part is just a little bit of reviews 
and then I'm going to give you an outro of how I started this and why I started it. Peace. I wanted to add that I use a, a DE 5000 LCR meter and I can keep a record of every pickup I make. And uh, this has a USB port to your PC and you can export everything into Excel and keep a record of every spec of every pickup you make. And th this goes into real heavy specifications, not just your K-Ohms and your, and your Henry's, it does capacitance and your RP, and uh, which is parallel resistance. And I don't know why it's called RP, it should be PR, but uh, I don't make the rules. I don't design the things. But And then there's two or three other little settings in there that and, and it, you can go all the way from 10 all the way up to 100K on it. So you keep great, great records of your pickups and your builds. So nice little meter. Unfortunately, it's discontinued. It's all over Amazon, though. So if you want to pick one up, I'd get them while they're out there. I even have a backup. So, But uh, I don't know why they quit making good meters, but they do. I wanted to add one thing. Um, about guitar builds and, and, and recording. Um, I do mixing and mastering in my studio also, and I use a program called Session Wire, which I recommend all you musicians to get a hold of this. If, if your buddies live in different cities and you guys are still trying to do things together, I did a Pro Tool session where, from my home, the producer was in Miami, the artist was in France, so they, they limit you to, to three. Um, and I, I have Reaper, I have every program you need or whatever, but um, with Session Wire, I can send you a link after the mixing and mastering is done. And as many musicians that played on it can join on the link and go, hey, I want this, can you change this, can you do this, can you do this. This stops all the revision uh, where you send a mix to somebody and somebody wants something changed and blah, blah, blah. You can do it live right there on the spot. No latency to it. And you can record your parts. Uh, and it doesn't matter what doll you're on. Uh, so you can have five buddies plumb across the country or across the world. And uh, it's a great software program. It's in its Session Wire Studio version. You guys check into it. But anyways, when it comes to the guitars, I, I, would, I bought... 10 unfinished bodies um, and different woods. Uh, I, I got Mighty Might, All Parts, Dylan, uh, a Luther I know back on the East Coast that did some roasted bodies. And, and only one of these bodies uh, was a used body. And the young lady's name was Julie. And it was a guitar that her father had bought her they sanded it down and painted it, didn't like the results, sanded it back down, so she was, went and got another guitar and she was just selling the body. So it was a, a family thing, and I almost didn't buy it because of that. And I thought, well, let, let me get that and pick it up. So this first guitar, Julie, got painted shell pink. It got a 62 neck on it. And this was my first guitar that I did with the nitro paint and my vintage pickups in it. And uh, this is the one that started it all. This guitar was featured in Premier Guitar Magazine in the April 2023 version. Um, the article is uh, the Reader of the Month. So very proud of that. And I want to thank uh, Premier. I had written them and... Um, just basically told them what was going on and how how much I had enjoyed their uh, magazine over the years. And I think it's one of the best guitar magazines on the market. Really, really have enjoyed it. And there's a couple mods I picked up from uh, reading their reading their magazine that I use, the uh, Seven Way and the, and the, the Blend. And uh, it, it took me six months or so before I decided to share it. But uh, they did the article, and, and uh, it's very cool. And uh, so as time goes on, I'll be sharing you some of the guitars I got here. And uh, that was the first one. 
and uh, have one here. This now has become Rosie number two. Um, the original Rosie uh, went to Ben Brooks Belgium, who lives in Atlanta, and he just kept playing it, and, and he wanted to buy it. And, and I'm I'm not selling guitars, but I did sell a couple here and there. So he took that one, and uh, I'm gonna leave a, a link to uh, Ben's name. He's he's another artist. There's a, there's a few you meet in your life, and you go, man, this is a no-brainer. How can this guy not make it? When I heard Walking in Memphis, I was like, man, just think what Ben would have done with that vocally. And and then he in the club days he was doing When a Man Loves a Woman, and just was tearing it up. And then Michael Bolton came out with his version. I was like, Michael needs to come hear how this cat sings it. Um, he's a, an Americana country artist, and he can also rock. And and he's been a good friend over the years. And, and um, uh, he, he's another one that should be a household name. And uh, it, the music business, is it, this is tough, guys. It's tough. And uh, if you're still messing around with it after age 30, uh, you're eight up. Your, your life, you're, you're just data up. It's over. God bless. Peace. As one of my customers pointed out, tone is very subjective, and it is. You take a player with great hands, he can get on an old 60s Kent, and he's going to get the very best tone out of it. It's amazing what great players can do. So I, I rate it as when it comes to tone. Number one, it's the player's hands. Number two, it's the pickups. The pickups do matter. They're so important. Number three, believe this or not, it's the neck. I have tried so many different necks with the builds and I've been doing, I don't know, 30, 40 part casters here and there. And, and it really matters. Um, and it doesn't have to be the big $700 fender necks, uh, all parts and mighty might. And there's all kinds of brands out there and, and, and some are just, you're paying high dollar for them and they just, they're dull, they have nothing in them. But all parts has a 62 reissue uh, veneer neck that is, it's spot on. And their big D neck and their V neck. Um, I've liked just about any neck I've purchased from them. And even the mighty mites. I've put them on many, many uh, necks, on many guitars. I got a buddy that's had a Mighty Might now that I put on his guitar. And he's had it probably 10 years and it hardly ever needs adjusted and, and does exactly what he wants. And then, of course, there's always the uh, Maple versus Rosewood. And I've, I've become where I like the Rosewoods a little bit better as I've gotten older, but I'm more of a Maple, maple fretboard guy. And anyways, after the neck comes the body. I don't need to mean to break any Luther's hearts, but um, we're always told it's cause the old guitar sounded so much better cause the wood and the body and everything. And I'm, I'm just not seeing that. Um, I will say how the body's uh, swamp ash uh, seems, seems, and this is all real close now. I would go swamp ash, um, and, and then, believe it or not, it's the relics, uh, the ones everybody's laughing at people for being posers and buying these half-painted guitars or whatever. Uh, I, I've got to put them second. And then, then any nitro painted bodies. And the polys that they use today, are, the thing with the polys is they're so much easier to paint. Uh, they'll take getting banged around and, and they're just tough. It's hard to beat a poly body if you want it to stay looking good and all that stuff. So that's my order. Player's hands, the pickups, the necks, the bodies, and then whatever you want to add from there. Bone nut, different type of trim loads. But that's my thing. I didn't know, don't know if you noticed through the... Uh, videos I was making uh, as I was building pickups that uh, my four big knuckles um, uh, anyways I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis at age 55 so those knuckles can get as big as golf balls during a flare um, so 
and it, and it hit my wrist real bad. So as, as a guitar player, um, it's the worst thing that can happen to you. And, you know, we love our hands and we love our, uh, oh, our ears. Yeah, number two. Um, but after that, so anyways, how I come about really getting serious about pickups, um, like I said, you know, we, we used to buy a finished bobbin and, and get some wire and put it on a drill and fill them up. And, and surprisingly, they didn't sound bad. They were real monophonic because we didn't understand about waxing and things like that. And uh, they say that waxing, the fumes and stuff can explode. So you got to really watch, watch what you're doing. So um, just don't get it too hot. That's, that's the whole key. Don't get it too hot. So anyways, uh, February 2020, I go to use the bathroom, go to urinate, and I don't know other, any other way to put this, but I was pissing pure blood. This wasn't pink. This wasn't, this looked like it's coming right out of the vein. So I go and get my wife, and I come back, and I finish going to the bathroom. She's like, are you hurting? And I'm like, no, I had no pain whatsoever. So a couple hours later, um, you know, she's talking about taking me in the emergency room or something. My right kidney felt like Mike Tyson had just used me as his punching bag. I mean, it's like, and I was like, I, I must have passed a stone or something. And uh, you, know, you still should go to the ER. So she calls my family physician, who, my doctor that I, at that time, only got to see once a year, you know, um, just for a checkup. And they sent me in for an MRI and found a tumor. And then they uh, did a biopsy. And it came out that it was high grade carcinoma bladder cancer. So they set me up for TURP surgery, which is T U R B T, if anybody wants to look it up. Uh, they go in with a catheter through your, you know what. And they remove the tumor that way. So scheduled for that, when we're in the middle of COVID, believe it or not, the hospital's closed down. And believe it or not, cancer was elective surgery. So here I am with cancer, could get no treatments, no nothing. The only way you're getting into a hospital was a uh, car wreck, heart attack, or gunshot. Other than that, it was all COVID. So come July, I was like one of the first ones that went in for surgery. And that little tiny tumor became a big issue and things did not look good for me. So I'm looking at the legacy of my life and I'm going, what's on my bucket list? What do, what do I want to do? And the things I really always wanted to learn was doing old nitro paint jobs. Um, and, and because there was just something beautiful, especially the DuPont colors, you know. Uh, that's what I remembered as a kid when I'd go in the music store. They, it's not like the superstores today. There might be three guitars on the wall. Um, so, and I owned a 54 and 72 in high school. And uh, yeah, I mean, this thing, you talk about a relic, it barely had any paint left on it. And a uh, buddy of mine's uh, father had passed away and his mom said just get rid of the guitar and I picked it up for, I think I paid 175 bucks for it and it was so beat up I didn't want my parents to know that I'd paid that much money for this ugly old guitar and uh, but the neck on it was huge and I was a baseball player and had strong hands but uh, I don't think this was a D I think this neck was more like a U but I never forgot the tone and I traded it in on a brand new 72 Tele Custom. And that was my first brand new Fender guitar. So anyways, back to the bucket list, uh, nitro paint jobs. And I really, really wanted to learn to make good sounding vintage pickups. Because I had all these guitars I built and all the pickups I liked were $500 plus, you know, if you get uh, Josephina, or, or, or find some old Abigail somewhere and, and I have all their pickups and and I just the pickups I want I'm going man you know that's, that's 10 grand I'd have out in pickups so 
let me research some like I got into my notes I videotaped stuff took pickups apart step by step and I just kept building them my wife just kept buying me more notebooks what are you doing with all the notes and I'm just you know the notes are getting bigger and bigger and finally I bugged all the great local players and I said hey give me your guitars man so I'm throwing my pickups in there give these a try and it, one guy he was the first one Don Day and he's going to do some demos for me he said he knew within 10 seconds 10 seconds that these were special pickups and that was my vintage form VAR uh, what I the model was 5060 VR or VF it stands for vintage form VAR and uh, he, he just he just absolutely fell in love with them and then we have another great gunslinger here in town who should be a household name uh, Frank Harrison and you can look him up on Facebook and YouTube I mean just fabulous guitar player singer frontman songwriter he, he's the whole package and you just wonder why guys like this just how how, how do they not become stars I mean he, he's in that Joe Bonamassa vein and, and better singer um or different singer, I should, you know, Joe's a good singer, I don't want to knock him on that. But, I mean, he's, he's in that vein, just a fabulous player. So I put some pickups in for him, um, Denny Petroff, um, one of my buddies, Ben Belcher, who lives down in Atlanta, but used to play the clubs here locally. And I've worked with all these guys in one way or the recording, touring, I've done live sound for them. Um, I mean, I've done every job you can do in the music business. Drive tractor trailers, buses, uh, worked with gospel groups, I've done country, power trios, and I've done it all. And I never made it as an artist. And, and it wasn't I that, that I didn't try. It's, it's just so hard to keep a band together. It's so hard. And uh, anyways, for my legacy, I'm like, let's see what I can do with these builds. And, and I gave away 10 guitars to players that had been important to me in my music career. And I just gave them to them. I wanted them to have something to remember me by. And then with the cancer on my mind 24-7, I said, I, I just, I'm going to just build these guitars as long as I'm on this side of the green grass and, and I want to learn to build the pickups so that was the motivation behind it I kept going and, and I started realizing how much control and what I could do with the tones and, and, and just this simple little bobbin with rod magnets on it and wire that how much you could really really change the sound of the pickups so that's how it all started guys um, and I want you to give them a listen, and, and uh, uh, again, I don't know if this is going to turn into a, a podcast thing. I'm happy to report uh, my last checkup, December 15th of 2023. Um, uh, no more new tumors. It's the first time now since 2020, no tumors. So I had no surgeries scheduled, uh, no more treatments, and, and I got stressed out to six months. Uh, so it didn't quite go six months this time, but sometime in May they're going to check me again. But I feel great. I put my weight back on. I mean, I went from 188 to 130 pounds. So I was a pretty sick boy. And uh, looks like I've turned the corner, but there's a three-year three, three year window with bladder cancer once it looks like it's under control. And uh, that's all I can do. And, and I'm going to continue building uh, pickups and long as I can and, and uh, I plan on being here a while we we have a good family tree they all make it to the 90s we've had some crack the century mark and I plan on being there so thank you God bless peace it's an M-I-E -M -I -E music thing let's see if I can say that right M-I-E music thing thank you alright just gonna go over a few things with you um the opening song um, is called Coming Again, and it features Dante on guitar. Um, we played in a band together back in the 80s, and we have remained very good friends over the years. Um, Don will be doing some demos for me. 
Um, he's a great session player. He's still actively out here playing. Um, when it comes to session work, man, he charts his stuff out, and it's like real tiny. You can't even see it. And it's like, man, he just sight reads and flies by, and he's done. <laughs> In and out like a TV dinner. Um, the music playing lightly in the background is the actually the 30th anniversary of my last CD I put out 30 years ago hard to believe and that was done on two inch tape and um, so uh, I had been messing with digital since 88 but didn't go all in until it got to 24 bit back then we called it slow tools and there's a lot of Pro Tools haters out there for some reason, and I use Reaper and all just whatever's on the market. But uh, you know, Pro Tools started it all. It really uh, whatever features you like in a lot of the other dolls, it, it, it all came because of Pro Tools. So don't forget that you don't have to use it. But the hate is crazy. But anyways, when it comes to my pickups, they all get tested in the cheapest low-cost instrument you can put together this is a hundred dollar body sixty five dollar guitar fetish neck that was a pancake and I cut the headstock out myself and stained it and filed my frets and everything this has 63's in it right now and which will uh, Don's gonna be doing a demo on these pretty soon maybe even Frank Harrison I don't know um, but they have to sound good in these first. And then they get beta tested for six months. And I put them in a few players, make sure everything's good. But usually once I turn them over to the players, they're, they're ready to go. I just uh, want to make sure if anybody would change anything. Um, I'm going to give you some reviews now. Um, these first couple, i got to wear these glasses because they can't see. Um, this is a couple eBay purchases and it's harder to sell on eBay because for some reason I can't get a video thing going through. You can put links up there, but people don't want to download links. They want to hear the pickups. And when I went to do the pickups, like I said, everything I wanted was 500 and over. Um, I'm, I'm like, can I make some pickups with good American parts? good American suppliers, good American wire, and keep them under 200 bucks. And that was the goal. I ended up, I sell most of my pickups for around 190 and a loaded pick guard under $300. I just had to raise my seven ways up to 295 from 275, but my five ways are 275. Um, the little five way switch, um, which is um, the one with the spring. I, I don't use none of the other jump. They just went from 17 bucks in December, went to reorder inventory, and they're $27 now. And every once in a while, you can find one for 24 or whatever, but I like to buy, you know, 510 at a pop. And it just, it just, it's crazy. And then the accessory kit that I supply with all my sales, uh, they jump $6. And, um, uh, I just wish we could get this this under control. But anyways, this this right here is from Dennis, and he purchased on eBay, and he he picked some of the pre CBS ones, uh, vintage form bar, the fifty sixty VFs, and the great sound of pickups. Anyways, uh, he writes. You can, you can do DMs and then you can do your reviews. Some guys, guys will DM you and, and you have a nice conversation with them and then they'll just do a very simple review, which is cool because at least it's a good review. But man, I'd love to have nicer reviews on some of them because I'm just a small company. I just sold locally and I've only been, I only marketed them a little over a year ago. So anyways, uh, Dennis writes, uh, I got a 60th anniversary Squire. A friend was selling cheap. That's when I decided to spend some dough, and it sounds close to my 61. And I only play once a week or so after 50 years 
of anywhere from 185 to 300 gigs a year. If something comes up that warrants my good gear, i.e. big money, I'll bring out the goods. But for bar gigs, i.e. low money, that strap with your pickups sounds great. Great, nice tone, great sustain. Thanks, be well. And his review was, thanks again for a great set of strap pickups and pick guard. It's rare to find a professional like you. Thank you, Dennis. It means a lot, buddy. It really does. And then uh, here's Mike out in northern Ohio. And I, I felt bad for this guy because he, he has an original 1982 AVRI. And he took the pickups out and put in uh, some Clapton lace sensors in it. And he cannot find his pickups. He don't know where they're at. He, you know, hopefully they will show up for him. But so I made him a set spec'd out for that guitar, and um, I, I hope you find him, buddy. I, I really feel bad because before COVID, those AVRIs, the eighty twos, were selling for. I've seen them from eight hundred bucks to twelve hundred dollars. They they wasn't doing much, but they've now become the next collectible because people's really getting aware of them now and i'm the, now they're going for four to ten grand and they're just going to keep going up and i've seen people selling the pickups for three thousand dollars and you don't even know if you're getting the real mccoy or not so it's it's hard to say so he writes to uh, mike writes to me he says you are definitely a true craftsman after i received the pickup i immediately recognized how my original had looked your name will definitely be my go-to for any of my vintage buddies looking for correct and accurate pickups. Thank you again for your outstanding service. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it, buddy. And I'm glad you at least got your guitar going. And hopefully that them, them pickups will show up. And I'm going to go back over here and put on some regular glasses. That stuff was tiny. But I have so many... Uh, every, everybody's liked them and, and loved them. Nothing but praise and love from everybody. And, and uh, a lot of the guys that have bought the Form VAR uh, pre CBS have, have, have turned around and, and, and come back and bought the uh, gray bottom or AVRIs the, that's made with plain enamel. Because I only initially started with two pickups. And, uh, and that's all I sold for, uh, for years. And it was a pre-CBS that I called the Independence. And then I had the uh, gray bottoms, which are 69s. And uh, then I stretched into the AVRIs because I had people asking me about it. I said, okay, let me check into it. And there's not a whole lot of difference in the gray bottoms and the AVRIs, but there is some. There's enough that, that you need to make a choice on that one way or the other. Um, anyways, uh, what do we got here? Let me open up my book and I, I keep all my DMs and stuff. I'm a, I'm, even though I'm an old fart, it's, um, I'm a young company, uh, just getting going here, you know. Um, Andrew, um, uh, I believe he was out in New York. He, he, he purchased both, both kinds. And uh, so he has the pre-CBS. And he also has the uh, AVRIs. Actually, he has gray bottoms. Okay. So his gray bottoms, um, which is early CBS, um, just got done replacing the noiseless pickups in my deluxe Strat. These sound amazing. So alive sounding. Thanks a million. Incredible pickups. And those were the uh, loaded gray bottoms. And then the pre-CBS, the 5060 VFs. Um, I recommend your pickups to anyone who will listen. I have a set in a black park caster I, I put together, and it may be my favorite guitar. It's a hardtail and super lightweight. That's Andrew Gutuski. I hope I'm saying it right. Anyways, and then his review was five star on reverb. Sound fantastic. Pleasure to deal with and amazing pickups. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, Russell Ogle. 
he he bought some of them and and he bought a seven way pre CBS and uh, I kept waiting to hear from him and I was like man wow I wonder if something's wrong and I contacted him a couple times and this guy was just so busy he just didn't have time to put him in so he he finally got him in and. He just, uh, five star, as described, delivered quickly, sounds great, we'll buy again. Thank you, Russell. Atlanta. We'll be down south there. Um, now, a little guy here, Michael Brenton, uh, which is the furthest I've shipped my pickups, and he's in Hawaii. And if I ever get out that way, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see this young man. He's, he's been really great. But he had surgery and didn't get him get him in before thirty days, and he has a nice, very nice guitar collection, and he didn't have time to get his uh, review in, and for some reason, reason, reverb cut you off at thirty days, so he didn't get to get his review in. So hopefully he'll be able to get on YouTube or Google or something and let you guys know how he did. But I, I hear, from, as a matter of fact, I just heard from him a couple of days ago. Um, hey, Job. I went to Reverb to try and give a feedback. It says I can't leave a feedback at this time. But he's real happy, and, and he's trying to make a decision of uh, of which type of plain enamel he wants because he wants to try and, uh, the, the opposite. So is he going to do the 69 gray bottoms or ABRI? So. And that's another thing, you guys. You purchase for me. Uh, let me know ahead of time. You get a 10% discount on your next purchase. So, and uh, this is a husband and wife team, Jeff and Christina Shockey. Um, they build guitars, so they're actual builders. And, and uh, Christina writes, uh, What a great pickup. Job helped me out with what I needed, and the pickups he makes are amazing. Great sounding pickup. I wouldn't change a thing about it. Fast shipping and very polite. I highly recommend grabbing a set of these pickups because they are spot on. And these were the 82 AVRIs. And I, I heard from Jeff. He DM'd me her husband. And I want you guys to know that they're on Facebook. It's Shockey Custom Guitars. S-H-O-C-K-E-Y. And he currently is making seven models. And he even has just all the way down old school to three ways. He's not even doing some five ways on some of these. So uh, it's a growing company and they're out of Charleston, West Virginia. So look these guys up, man. Give them a shot. Some of these Luthers out here build some great. You know, I had to go out there and throw no $5,000 down, man. Um, okay, Daniel Mustang. He's out of the Chicago area. Now, he he's what a... When it comes to guitar players, I call it the 80-20 rule. There's 80% of you will plug it in, get a little get a little sound, and you're completely happy. And then the other 20% of you, you're the picky ones. And that's who I'm marketing for. And I hope to dig into that 80%, but those 20% picky guys, that's who I'm after. Because once they find the tone, they know what to do with it. But... Uh, these guys, he sent one of the, one set of the pickups off to a, a guy that specializes in um, doing custom pick guard stuff. So they wanted it set up a certain way. But the pre CBS, the other ones, um, he bought AVRIs also. But the pre CBS ones, he uh, I've installed the pre CBS set and a build this afternoon, and they beat them against a set of Fraylon Blue specials and a comparable build. Tone is so subjective and difficult to put in words, and I forbid, I critique, but the Fraylon compared to the pre-CBS is like mono versus stereo and turned a guitar into a fine musical instrument. I mean, I can't thank you enough. I mean, that's, that's what I'm after. That's what I want to hear from you great players. And it's Daniel Mustang in Chicago. And... Uh, like I said, they like the AVRIs. They sent me some video of it, but um, you could only critique the critique time had wasted on the, on the reverb, so didn't get to get it in there. And then I have um, Gary Neese. He has both sets of the pickups. Um, so he has 
the AVRIs, and pre-CBS. Uh, they, a lot of guys just call them white tops, but that's, that's the 82 AVRIs. And they made like 500 of them uh, in each of the model year while they were still in Fullerton. And even done some white and grays, and they're even more rare. So, But nobody's asked me for them, but I'll, I'll be glad to make them if they want them. And he says, I put the white tops in my Fender SSS, and they are fantastic. Better than advertised, I can't imagine any other pickups capturing the vintage sound so perfectly overall in all five positions. Far, far better than Fender Fat 50s and 60s I've had or of many boutiques. Yours are clearly better in every way. Man, I just don't get much better than that. Thank you, Gary. Anyways, um, his overall review was... These are absolutely the best vintage tone pickups I have ever tried. Job has absolutely nailed it. I've had many custom shops and boutique pickups, but these are head and shoulders above the rest. You owe it to yourself to try any of Job's products. He is a terrific seller. His products are exactly, if not better than described, and his follow-up and communication is also terrific. He and his pickups are A1. Gary Neese. Pennsylvania and this is why I do this man I I want every guitar player you can have great tone most uh, uh, player player old fenders uh, if, even if you can find one for 10 grand and the pots aren't correct or the neck's been changed or whatever um, anything you do them old ones they, they'll lose some value but you can have a, I'm here to tell you, you can have a cheap guitar down to a Squire or even lower than that. I'm not making fun of the Squires a lot. A lot of guys touring with them, buddy, because they don't worry about them getting stolen. Um, you can fix them up, up, hot rod them, and they're a low-cost guitar. And uh, uh, anyways, the, the players out of uh, Mexico, the made in Mexico ones, the new player guitars, I cannot believe the improvement in the neck on those. And you take those and put a set of my pickups in there, man, you you got a great sounding instrument. They just, they're killer. And uh, so it, it depends on your wallet. I understand. I mean, these guys are selling, there's guys out there selling pickups for 60 bucks and then people are buying them. I don't understand that. But you it's a it's a low cost upgrade. I mean, a lot of these instruments are all new, are all over two thousand dollars now, man. Take you two or three hundred bucks and fix your fix your guitar up. It's all there. It's beautiful. Uh, one of the things people like about me being a small company, they can contact me directly and talk with me, and they enjoy it. And I enjoy sharing my information and my knowledge. And uh, I wish you all the best. God bless. Peace. Keep on jamming out there, man. Enjoy, enjoy that music.